Buffalo quarterback Trent Edwards passes in the Week 8 clash at the New York Jets, October 28, 2007 The 2007 Buffalo Bills season was the 38th season for the team in the National Football League and their 48th season overall. The Bills finished their 2007 season with a record of 7-9 and tied their 7-9 record in 2006, but failed to qualify for the playoffs, and continues a playoff appearance drought since the 1999-2000 season. The eight-year playoff drought became the longest such stretch in team history. The opening game of the season was notable in that tight end Kevin Everett was injured on a kickoff. Everett sustained a fracture and dislocation of his cervical spine that his doctors characterized as life-threatening the day after the injury, and stated it was likely to leave him with permanent neurological impairment. However, on September 11, 2007, Everett showed significant movement in his arms and legs, which led doctors to speculate that he might eventually be able to walk again. Indeed, Everett walked in public for the first time at Ralph Wilson Stadium before the home finale against the New York Giants on December 23, 2007. Head coach Dick Duran entered second year with the Bills, joined by offensive coordinator Steve Fairchild and defensive coordinator Perry Fuel. The Bills did experience varying degrees of success with their first three draft picks in the 2007 draft. Running back Marshawn Lynch made the AFC's Pro Bowl squad in 2008. His career in Buffalo, however, was often marred by off-field issues. Paul Poslozny was a solid defender for the Bills for four seasons. Quarterback Trent Edwards became the Bills' starting quarterback in Week 3 of 2007, when starter J.P. Lossman was injured by the New England Patriots' Vince Wilfork. When healthy, Edwards was the Buffalo's starting quarterback, until he was waived early in the 2010 season after a dismal start, in favor of Bills' backup quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York the Bills began their 2007 campaign at home against the Denver Broncos. In the first quarter, the Bills struck first with WR-PR Roscoe Parrish returning a punt 74 yards for a touchdown. Then, near the end of the period, the Broncos got on the board with kicker Jason Elam getting a 21-yard field goal. Denver went on to get the only score of the second quarter, as Elam kicked a 48-yard field goal. On the opening kickoff for the second half, a scary injury occurred to Bills' take Kevin Everett, as he suffered a cervical spine injury. He was carted off the field, and was rushed to Millard Fillmore Gates Hospital for an emergency surgery. It was due to the fastest application of cold ever applied to an injured spine that gave Everett a chance to walk again despite the initial grim prognosis. In the third quarter, Buffalo struck again as rookie Airbay Marshawn Lynch got a 23-yard TD run. Afterwards, the Broncos pulled within two as QB Jay Cutler completed a five-yard TD pass to WR Brandon Marshall. Near the end of the fourth quarter, Cutler drove his team into field goal range and with no timeouts left, Denver's special teams came on and Elam kicked the game-winning 42-yard field goal with no time left on the clock. With a shocking loss, the Bills began the season at 0-1. At Heinz Field, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania hoping to rebound from a last-second home loss to the Broncos, the Bills went to Heinz Field for their Week 2 matchup against the throwback-clad Pittsburgh Steelers. In the first half, the Bills struggled on offense while their defense only allowed three Jeff Reed field goal. In the third quarter, Buffalo got their only score of the game as kicker Ryan Lindell nailed a 24-yard field goal. For the rest of the game, the Steelers dominated, with QB Ben Roethlisberger completing a one-yard TD pass to Tay Matt Spieth later in the period along with Airbay Willie Parker getting an 11-yard TD run in the fourth quarter. With a loss, the Bills fell to 0-2. At Gillette Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts trying to snap a two-game skid, the Bills flew to Gillette Stadium for a Week 3 divisional fight with the New England Patriots. In the first quarter, QBJ. P. Lossman was immediately injured on the first offensive play of the game. He finished the series, but ended up on the bench for the rest of the game. After New England took the lead with kicker Steven Goskowski's 24-yard field goal, rookie QB Trent Edwards played the rest of the game for Buffalo. The Bills got their only score of the game as Airbay Marshawn Lynch got an 8-yard TD run, and a Ryan Lindell extra point put the Bills ahead surprisingly 7-3. However, in the second quarter, the Patriots were able to open up their running game when Bills rookie standout Paul Pazluzny was lost due to a broken arm. This left passing lanes open, and for the rest of the game, the Patriots dominated. QB Tom Brady's 8-yard TD pass to Tay Benjamin Watson and a 3-yard TD pass to WR Randy Moss made it 17-7 at the half. In the third quarter, 
New England continued its conquest with Brady's four-yard TD pass to W.R. Jabbar Gaffney and Airbay Sammy Morris' four-yard TD run. In the fourth quarter, the Patriots ended the day with Brady and Moss hooking up with each other again on a 45-yard TD pass. With their third straight loss, the Bills fell to 0-3. Week 4, New York Jets at Buffalo Bills at Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York There were many factors that made the Bills underdogs before Week 4 and 0-3 start coming off of a demoralizing loss to the New England Patriots. A starting quarterback in Trent Edwards who was starting his very first NFL game, numerous defensive injuries of starters, and an opponent in the New York Jets that had just gotten its first win over the Miami Dolphins. Things started off well for the Bills as Edwards led the offense down into Jets territory, but a Robert Royal fumble caused by Jonathan Vilma ended a promising drive. The Jets could not get any sort of momentum from the turnover, and were forced to punt. In the second quarter, things heated up as the Bills once again managed to gain several first downs, only to see the Jets force another turnover as a deep ball by Edwards meant for Lee Evans was intercepted by Andre Dyson. Three events late in the first half led to a flurry of big plays Bills safety Dante Widner tackled Jets Airbay Leon Washington inbounds to keep the clock running, quarterback Chad Pennington faked a spike and completed a pass to put the Jets in field goal range with a couple of seconds left. And Jets kicker Mike Nugent clanged the ball off the right upright, leaving the game scoreless at the half. The second half saw the Bills take the lead on a 10-yard run by Marshawn Lynch, his second of the year. It was all set up by Edwards going 4 for 4 on the drive. The Jets tied it at 7 on an inspired drive by Pennington, who found Lavaranius Coles in the end zone for a touchdown. The fourth quarter saw the Bills take advantage of the Jets when reserve defensive back Jabari Greer intercepted Pennington. The Bills cashed in as Edwards found reserve tight end Michael Gaines on a bootleg fourth down play at the Jets' one-yard line, and once again the Bills got more points when kicker Ryan Lindell kicked a 46-yard field goal to make it 17-7. The Jets came right back with points of their own as Leon Washington rambled in to cut the lead to 17-14. After a Buffalo punt with less than two minutes remaining, the Jets failed to score as a forced pass by Pennington with six seconds left ended up in the acrobatic arms of Terrence McGee, preserving the 17-14 victory. The Bills took over second place in the AFC East at 1-3 because of the win, while the Jets fell to 1-3. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York coming off their divisional home win over the Jets, the Bills stayed at home, donned their throwback uniforms, and played their first home Monday night football game in 13 years against the undefeated Dallas Cowboys. In the first quarter, Buffalo got off to a fast start, with DB George Wilson returning an interception 25-yard for a touchdown, along with the only score of the period. In the second quarter, the Cowboys tied the game with QB Tony Romo completing a 22-yard TD pass to Tay Jason Witten. Afterwards, Buffalo increased its lead with kicker Ryan Lindell getting a 24-yard field goal, along with a Chris Kelsey intercepting a Romo pass in the end zone for a touchdown. Dallas ended the half with kicker Nick Folk getting a 47-yard field goal. In the third quarter, Dallas drew closer with Folk kicking a 29-yard field goal. The Bills immediately responded with CB Terrence McGee returning a kickoff 102 yards for a touchdown. The Bills led 24-13 until 3.46 left in the fourth quarter, when the Cowboys got within eight points with Folk getting a 37-yard field goal. From there, things began to look grim for Buffalo as a Trent Edwards interception eventually turned into Romo's four-yard TD pass to W.R. Patrick Creighton. The two-point conversion was no good, but Dallas got a successful onside kick. With only three seconds left, Folk came out for a 53-yard field goal. The first try was good, yet it was negated with head coach Dick Duran calling timeout. However, the technique that worked for Denver and Oakland for this year failed as Folk got the game-winning 53-yard field goal as time ran out, despite the Bills' defense getting six turnovers from Romo. With a heartbreaking loss, the Bills entered their bye week at 1-4. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York coming off their bye week, the Bills stayed at home for a fierce Week 7 interconference duel with the Baltimore Ravens. This matchup was notable for Airbay Willis Magahi heading back to Buffalo to play against his former team. In the first quarter, the Bills got the first blood with kicker Ryan Lindell getting a 29-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, Buffalo increased its lead with Lindell nailing a 26-yard and a 35-yard field goal. In the third quarter, the Ravens began to climb back into the game with Magahi getting a 46-yard TD run. The Bills responded with Lindell getting a 41-yard field goal, along with Magahi's successor, 
Airbay Marshawn Lynch, getting a one-yard TD run. In the fourth quarter, Baltimore drew closer as QB Kyle Bowler completed a 15-yard TD pass to WR Derek Mason. Buffalo managed to hold on for the victory. With a win, the Bills improved to 2-4. At the Meadowlands, East Rutherford, New Jersey coming off their impressive home win over the Ravens, the Bills flew to the Meadowlands for an AFC East rematch with the New York Jets. In the first quarter, Buffalo busted out early with kicker Ryan Lindell getting a 30-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, New York tied the game with kicker Mike Nugent getting a 27-yard field goal for the only score of the period. During a scoreless third quarter, the Bills starting QB had to leave the game with a sprained right wrist, forcing a fully healed J.P. Lossman into the game. In the fourth quarter, Buffalo took control with Lindell nailing a 40-yard field goal, along with Lossman's 85-yard TD pass to W.R. Lee Evans. With a win, not only did Buffalo improve to 3-4, but they also swept the Jets for the first time since 1997. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York coming off a season-sweeping road win over the Jets, the Bills went home for a Week 9 interconference duel with the Cincinnati Bengals. With rookie QB Trent Edwards out for a sore right wrist, J. P. Lossman got the chance to reclaim his starting job. In the first quarter, Buffalo drew first blood with Lossman completing an 8-yard TD pass to W.R. Lee Evans that was initially ruled incomplete. The Bengals responded with QB Carson Palmer completing a 15-yard TD pass to W.R.T. J. Hushmanzade. In the second quarter, the Bills went back into the lead with kicker Ryan Lindell getting a 23-yard field goal. However, Cincinnati immediately responded with WR slash KR Glenn Holt returning the kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown. Buffalo ended the half with Lindell kicking a 21-yard field goal. In the third quarter, the Bills went back to work with Lindell getting a 21-yard field goal. However, the Bengals answered with Palmer completing a 1-yard TD pass to FB Jeremy Johnson. In the fourth quarter, Buffalo began its final assault with Lindell nailing a 38-yard field goal. Afterwards, rookie Airbay Marshawn Lynch was a key player as he threw an 8-yard TD pass to Tay Robert Royal on a trick play, along with getting his best run of the year with a 56-yard TD run. With a win, not only did the Bills improve to 4-4, but they have won three straight games for the first time since 2004. Lossman ended the day completing 24 out of 34 passes for 295 yards with a touchdown and an interception. Meanwhile, Lynch finally managed to get not only his first 100-yard game, but also his first 150-yard game. He ended the day with 29 carries for 153 yards and a touchdown, along with his touchdown pass. At Dolphin Stadium, Miami Gardens, Florida Buffalo at Miami, Week 10 coming off an impressive home win over the Bengals, the Bills flew to Dolphin Stadium for an AFC East duel with the winless Miami Dolphins. In the first quarter, Buffalo trailed early as Dolphins kicker Jay Feely managed to get a 38-yard field goal for the only score of the half. In the third quarter, the Bills began their comeback as DeChris Kelsey sacked Miami QB Cleo Lemon in the end zone for a safety. However, the Dolphins respond with Lemon getting a 5-yard TD run. In the fourth quarter, Buffalo took control as rookie Airbay Marshawn Lynch got a 3-yard TD run, along with getting a 2-point conversion run to tie the game. Later in the game, kicker Ryan Lindell sealed Miami's fate as he nailed the game-winning 34-yard field goal. With their fourth straight win, the Bills improved to 5-4, while Miami remains winless at 0-9. This win gave Buffalo their first four-game winning streak for the first time since 2004. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York coming off their close victory over the winless Dolphins, the Bills went home to play the 9-0 New England Patriots, coming off their bye week. The game had just started when Randall Gay picked off J.P. Lossman, which led to the Patriots' first touchdown, a six-yard run up the middle by Lawrence Maroney. After a Brian Mormon punt, the Patriots scored again, this time on a 43-yard pass from Tom Brady to Randy Moss, with Moss' touchdown breaking the record for most touchdowns by a Patriots receiver in a single season. However, the Bills answered with a 47-yard touchdown pass of their own from Lossman to Roscoe Parrish, to cut the lead to 14-7, which was the score at the end of the first quarter. However, on the first play of the second quarter, Brady hit Moss again for a touchdown from 16 yards out to give them a two-score lead again. Seven minutes later, Brady threw his third touchdown of the game, again to Moss. Moss and Brady hooked up for one final touchdown in the first half when Brady hit Moss with only 10 seconds left in the first half, giving the Patriots a 35-7 lead at the half. 
In the second half, the Patriots added to their lead when, on a fourth down from the six, Brady hit Benjamin Watson to put the Patriots over 40 points for the fourth time in 2007. The Bills could only muster up a 52-yard field goal by Ryan Lindell. In the fourth quarter, with Maroney out of the game, Kyle Eckel scored a one-yard touchdown to cap off their final touchdown drive of the night. A minute after the score, Ellis Hobbs recovered a Buffalo fumble and scored from 35 yards out to finish the scoring at 56-10, a season high for the Patriots. And the most points scored by a road team since 1976, when the Atlanta Falcons put up 62 on the New Orleans Saints. Matt Castle relieved Brady and finished off the route for the Patriots. At game's end, New England went over 400 points scored on the season. With a loss, Buffalo fell to 5-5. At Jacksonville Municipal Stadium, Jacksonville, Florida hoping to rebound from their humiliating home loss to the Patriots, the Bills flew to Jacksonville Municipal Stadium for a Week 12 duel with the Jacksonville Jaguars. For QBJ. P. Lossman, he was playing to keep his starting job. In the first quarter, Buffalo trailed early as Jaguars Airbay Fred Taylor got a 50-yard TD run, along with kicker Josh Scobby getting a 46-yard field goal. In the second quarter, Jacksonville increased its lead with Scobby kicking a 33-yard field goal. The Bills managed to get on the board with Lossman's 10-yard TD pass to Airbay Anthony Thomas. The Jaguars ended the half with Scobby getting a 22-yard field goal. In the third quarter, Jacksonville increased its lead with Scobby kicking a 23-yard field goal. Buffalo managed to respond with W.R. Roscoe Parrish getting a 24-yard TD run on a reverse. However, in the fourth quarter, the Jaguars took control for the rest of the game as Scobby nailed a 20-yard field goal, QB David Garrett completing a 59-yard TD pass to W.R. Reggie Williams, and Air Bay Maurice Jones drew getting a 17-yard TD run. With a loss, the Bills fell to 5-6. to six. At FedEx Field, Landover, Maryland trying to snap a two-game losing skid, the Bills flew to FedEx Field for a Week 13 interconference duel with an emotionally charged Washington Redskins. Before the kickoff, the stadium held a memorial service for Sean Taylor, as well as all players across the NFL wearing a number 21 sticker on the back of their helmets. Due to the recent poor play of QBJ. P. Lossman, rookie QB Trent Edwards once again got the start. In the first quarter, Buffalo trailed early as Redskins kicker Sean Sweezum managed to get a 27-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, the Bills continued to trail as Sweezum kicked a 28-yard field goal. Afterwards, Buffalo got on the board as Pound Angelo Crowell sacked Washington QB Jason Campbell in his own end zone for a safety. The Redskins ended the half with Sweezum getting a 33-yard field goal. In the third quarter, the Bills started to reply as kicker Ryan Lindell got a 38-yard field goal, yet Washington replied with Air Bay Clinton Portis getting a 3-yard TD run. Buffalo closed out the period with Lindell kicking a 43-yard field goal. In the fourth quarter, Buffalo drew closer as Lindell kicked a 24-yarder, followed by a 33-yard field goal. On the Bills' final drive, Lindell managed to set up for a 51-yard field goal. The first try was good, but Redskins head coach Joe Gibbs called timeout. After the first timeout, Gibbs tried to call a second timeout, which led to them getting called for unsportsmanlike conduct and the Bills moved 15 yards closer to the end zone, which reduced Lindell's field goal to 36 yards. In the end, Lindell managed to nail the game-winning 36-yard field goal, squeaking a last-second win in the dying seconds of the game. With a win, Buffalo snapped a two-game losing streak and improved to 6-6. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York coming off their road win over the Redskins, the Bills went home, on their throwbacks again, and played a Week 14 AFC East rematch with the still winless Miami Dolphins. In the first quarter, Buffalo drew first blood with rookie QB Trent Edwards completing a 13-yard TD pass and a 28-yard TD pass to Tay Robert Royal. Afterwards, the Bills continued their early pounding as safety George Wilson returned a fumble 20 yards for a touchdown. The Dolphins got on the board with Airbay Sam Congato getting a 12-yard TD run, yet Buffalo answered with kicker Ryan Lindell getting a 51-yard field goal, setting a new Buffalo Bills record for 18 consecutive field goals. In the second quarter, the Bills continued their domination with Edwards completing a 9-yard TD pass to W.R. Lee Evans for the only score of the period. In the third quarter, Miami tried to rally as Gatto got a 20-yard TD run, while kicker Jay Feely nailed a 41-yard field goal. In the fourth quarter, 
Buffalo put the game away as Edwards hooked up with Evans again on a 70-yard TD pass to secure a season sweep. With a win, the Bills improved to 7-6. Buffalo's 24 first-quarter points became their most since 1992. At Cleveland Browns Stadium, Cleveland, Ohio coming off their dominating win over the Dolphins, the Bills flew to Cleveland Browns Stadium for a Week 15 interconference duel with the Cleveland Browns in a race for the wild card. The game was played under horrible weather conditions with heavy lake effect snow falling throughout the game making it difficult for either team to move the ball offensively. In the first quarter, Buffalo trailed early as Browns kicker Phil Dawson managed to get a 35-yard field goal for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, the Bills continued to trail as LS Ryan Neal snapped to punter Brian Mormon went over Mormon's head, causing him to kick the ball through his end zone for a Cleveland safety. Later, the Browns increased their lead with Dawson just managing to nail a 49-yard field goal. Near the end of the game, Buffalo managed to get deep into Cleveland territory. However, the Browns' defense proved to be too much to overcome. With their first shutout loss since 2003, not only did the Bills fall to 7-7, but it also knocked them out of the playoff race. At Ralph Wilson Stadium, Buffalo, New York hoping to rebound from their road loss to the Browns, the Bills went home for their last home game of the season as they hosted a Week 16 interconference duel against the New York Giants. In the first quarter, Buffalo got off to a fast start as rookie QB Trent Edwards completed a 3-yard TD pass to Tay Michael Gaines and a 4-yard TD pass to W.R. Lee Evans. In the second quarter, the Giants took the lead with Air Bay Brandon Jacobs getting a 6-yard and a 43-yard TD run, along with kicker Lawrence Tynes getting a 42-yard field goal. In the third quarter, the Bills regained the lead with rookie Air Bay Marshawn Lynch getting a 3-yard TD run for the only score of the period. However, in the fourth quarter, New York pulled away as pound Kawika Mitchell returning an interception 30 yards for a touchdown, Air Bay Ahmad Bradshaw getting an 88-yard TD run, and CB Corey Webster returning an interception 34 yards for a touchdown. With a loss, Buffalo fell to 7-8. At Lincoln Financial Field, Philadelphia hoping to end their season on a high note, the Bills flew to Lincoln Financial Field for a Week 17 interconference duel with the Philadelphia Eagles. In the first quarter, Buffalo trailed early as Eagles QB Donovan McNabb completed a two-yard TD pass to Tay Brent Selleck for the only score of the period. In the second quarter, Buffalo got on the board with kicker Ryan Lindell getting a 29-yard field goal. Philadelphia ended the half with kicker David Akers getting a 38-yard field goal. In the third quarter, the Bills replied with Lindell kicking a 23-yard field goal. However, the Eagles increased their lead with WR Kevin Curtis recovering a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. Buffalo answered with Lindell nailing a 22-yard field goal, but Philadelphia held on for the rest of the game. With a loss, Buffalo ended its season at 7-9, tying its record from last season. Thanks for watching.